Aleichem, everyone. Hope everyone is doing very well. It is Erev Shabbos, Parshas, Nitzavim, Vayelach. And we are now getting into that mode. Motzei Shabbos, we start saying Slichos. Rosh Hashanah is Mamish, Mamish, Mamish around the corner. And as I've mentioned, uh, Baruch Hashem, Yeshiva is doing really, really well. And I'm inviting everyone, 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 if you're in Sukkot, if you're not in it, Eretz Sofa Sukkot, come to Eretz Sofa Sukkot. If you're here, amazing. And uh, please, please, please join us Sunday night. Cholam Oy Sukkot will be having a Chanukah Sabayis for our new base Medrash. Lipa Shmeltzer will be performing and others. And it's expected to be a wonderful, wonderful event. And please, please join us. Um, I heard a very, very beautiful mashal, beautiful story from Rav Asha Weiss. It's found in his Sefer, his Sichos on Moadim by El. And I also heard it from this Sunday night, a beautiful, beautiful mice, which I think perhaps puts us in the proper frame of mind as we get ready for Slichos this Motzei Shabbos. So the story goes as follows. The Chavitz Chaim was traveling from Radin to, to Poland. And uh, in the course of his travels, he finds himself on an Erev Rosh Chodesh in a community made up of largely Alexander T- uh, Hasidim. And he walks into the shtibel, and he's looking for a minion for Mincha, and his minig was to say the special slichos that are recited on Erev Rosh Chodesh as Yom Kippur Katan. So he asked if we can get together a minion, not just for Mincha, but also for the slichos of Yom Kippur Katan. And the Hasidim responded that, no, no, we don't say those slichos. We don't say Tfilas Yom Kippur Katan. The Chafetz Chaim asked, why not? And they said, well, our Rebbe doesn't. The Rebbe doesn't, and therefore we don't. That's, uh, that's our practice. We do whatever our Rebbe does. So the Chafetz Chaim said, well, let me, em shalachem mashal, let me tell you a story. And he tells them a story, the following beautiful masha. He says there was a person, a traveler, who was in the train station going from Warsaw to Krakow. He meets another Jew in the train station. Shalom Aleichem. How are you? Where are you heading? And the other Jew says, I'm also, I'm heading to Krakow. So you say, okay, let's go together. Let us travel together to, to Krakow. So Ruven says, fine, Ruven and Shimon are going to travel together. They get on the train, and in the very first stop, Shimon gets off the train. Gets off the train. So Ruven looks at him and says, why are you getting off the train? After all, didn't you tell me you're going to Krakow? Why are you getting off the train right here at the first stop? And he responds, the reason I'm getting off the train at the first stop is because I'm not like you. You're a very, very wealthy man. You have a lot of money, and you can buy a ticket that's going to take you straight all the way from Warsaw to Krakow. You can go the whole way through. I'm not such a wealthy man. I'm a poor man, and therefore, all I have money for is the first stop. I get off the train, and then I go to the local shtibel, I go to the local shul, and I collect and I collect, and that's going to get me to the next stop. And at the next stop, I once again get off the train, go to the local shul, collect once again, and eventually, I too expect to get to crack. Says the Chavitz Chaim, that's the difference between me and your Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Alexander Hasid. Your Rebbe, he's a very, very wealthy man. He's wealthy in mitzvahs. He has a tremendous, tremendous amount, and therefore he can go and buy a direct ticket from Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur. Me, says the Chavitz Chaim, I'm not a wealthy man, I'm a poor person, therefore I have to go station to station. I have to go ahead and get off the train at every station to collect, to collect mitzvahs, to collect schuyos, to daven to Hashem, that I should be able to reach the next station. So for me, says the Chavitz Chaim, every one of those stations is, uh, is Erev Rosh Chodesh, Erev Rosh Chodesh, the special tefilos of Yom Kippur Katan, the Slichos, so that station to station I can't get from Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur, I have to stop at every station, every Rosh Chodesh, I have to say, my Yom Kippur Katan. And that is a very, very beautiful story, and with a beautiful message, because now we find ourselves in a very, very special period of time, a very special period of the Jewish calendar. We've been saying, we've been saying, with David Hashem Ori, we've been blowing the shofar now, it's three weeks, we've been blowing the shofar, and now this Motzei Shabbos, we begin, we hit a next station, and the next station is Slichos. And Wednesday night, we'll be in the middle of Yom Adin, Asera Simei Tshuva, Yom Kippurim, and then of course Chag Sukos. All of these are stations where we can go ahead and start collecting. Collecting, collecting not money, but collecting mitzvahs, collecting tshuva, collecting assets that will enable us to reach the next station. This year we say Slichos Motzei Shabbos, Rosh Hashanah's Wednesday night. That's the minimum amount of time to say Slichos. 
there's only four days of Slichos before the Yom Adin. And we know the minute gives, we start Slichos Motzei Shabbos, but the absolute minimum that we have is, is four days of Slichos. Many reasons are given for that. And uh, the one that's brought down in the Mishnah Brura and others farm is that when you bring a carbon tamid, when you bring a carbon, so the carbon has to be put aside for a minimum of four days for bedikas mumin, to examine mumin. And then we have to do the examination, so then it can be brought as a, as a carbon. So we, in this period of time, we have to do the very same thing. We have to have days, at least four days of bedikas mumin. And the nature of our mumin, the nature of human mumin by general, we are not, we do not have the mumin that we have, the blemishes that we have, we assume are not mum kavua, they're not fixed mumin, they are what we call a mum over, a mum that can be removed. So we have these four days, just like the carbon has four days of bedikas mumin, to check blemishes, these mumin that can pass through, that are mumin over him, and we have to go ahead and engage in this process of Bidikas Mumin. And if we have a moment over, we find the problem, we find Lashon Hara, perhaps we'll find a lack of Kavan and Tefillah, lack of saying brachos, lack of benching properly, whatever it might be. A lack of doing a sufficient chesed, Bikr Cholim, whatever it might be, these are the days of Bidikas Mumin. And the nature of human Mumin is man has the capacity to change. He has to introspect and see that I can make differences, I can change, and these mumim are not permanent mumim. They are mumim over him, and I can go ahead and fix them, cure them, and thereby get myself ready for the Yom Noron, Habor Malim Latova. This week's parasha, we read Parshas Netzav and Vayelech, and we just finished reading the Tolchacha of Parshas Kisavo, and very dire Tolchacha, very scary. And then, in the beginning of this week's parasha, it's something we have that person who says, I'm not worried about all those curses in the Tochacha, because after all, Shalom Yeli, peace will be by me, it will all be good by me, I'll be okay. Ki bishri rusli I'm going to walk along my way, and none of this is going to befall me. So the Gra in the Sefer Adaris Elio asks, how can a person hear that Tochacha and say, I'm good? Shalom Yeli. So he shares a very beautiful insight. The Gemara Megillah tells us we have two tochachas, Parshas Bechukosai and Parshas Kisava. What's the difference between the two tochachas? There are a couple of differences, but one that the Gemara highlights is in Parshas Bechukosai, the tocha is written Belashon Rabin. In Bechukosai Telechu, it's written Belashon Rabin. In Parshas Kisavo, the tocha is written Belashon Yachid. What's the significance, Yachid versus Rabin? So when something's written Belashon Rabin, so then the Torah is speaking not to the entity of Klal Yisrael, but to every single individual in Klal Yisrael. Not to the entity called corporate Klal Yisrael, but to each and every individual, hence the Lashon of Rabin. I'm speaking to everybody as an individual, that's a Lashon of Rabin. For example, we have you shall all, Belashon Rabin, plural, take the Lulav on the first day of Sukkot. And the Gemara Darshan, Ulekachtem, plural, that everyone has to shake his own Lulav. Usfartem Lachem, there's a mitzvah sphere to Omer, to count once again, Belashon Rabin, the Gemara Menachos Darshan, Shetehe Sphira, Lekolecha Vecha. Parshas Bechukos, the Tocha there, the Hashem and the curses are being delivered to every single Yachid. The Lashon Rabbin. In Parshas Kisav, you'll take a look at last week's Parsh, you'll notice that it's said the Lashon Yachid. The Tocha is not given to every single individual, but it's given to the group. It's given to Klal Yisrael. When I speak to Klal Yisrael, I'm speaking to the corporate entity, that's a singular. And therefore, I'm speaking to the entity called Klal Yisrael. How can a person say after hearing that tocha, shalom yeli, it's all going to be good? Human psychology. When I speak to a group, and I'll share with you, this happens in yeshiva all the time. When I speak to a group, as a group, so people say, "Mm, he's not talking to me. He's talking to that guy, and that guy, and that guy. It's not relevant to me. 
a person has the ability psychologically to say, yeah, he's speaking to the group, but that's not to me individually. And therefore this person can say, yeah, yeah, the tocha was to the nation. But there's so many things that I'm good with, I'm okay with, and therefore, shalom, yeli, I'll be okay, I'll be good. See, that's sometimes the danger of speaking to a group. I will often say to a group, to the guys in yeshiva, please, I need 10 people, help out, help out, with, you know, help out and volunteer for something. You yeah, say as a group, guess what? Often everyone says, oh, he's going to do it, someone else will do it. I don't have to go ahead and take individual responsibility. When I identify, okay, please raise your hands, and I identify, okay, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, you guys are doing it, all of a sudden a person feels a sense of personal Christ. So on the one end, the Torah has to be given to corporate Klal Yisrael. On the other hand, the risk of that is, I say to myself, because it was a national tocha, but I say to myself, not relevant to me. So these days that we're approaching the Yom Hadin, the Aseris Yimei it's time now to start thinking about Bedikas Mumin. We're going from station to station to think about how I can work myself, where I need to work on myself. For sure we cannot walk into Yom Hadin without preparation. Just like you can't bring a carbon without Bedikas movement, you can't go in without preparation. You have to start being prepared, identify Mumin, and understand we all have our flaws. We all have our issues, even when Tochacha is given in a broad scale, whether it's our Shul Rabbi, our Rebbe, whether, wherever we hear it, we have to understand that there is something here that's relevant to me, something here I need to work on, I need to fix as I approach the special, significant days, days of Ava and days of Yira, which are two sides of the very same coin as we get ourselves ready for the Yimei Hadin, Haba Aleinu Letoba.